Hello, thank you for joining our live broadcast today. It's been a few weeks since we've been able to do one of these live broadcasts. Um, we've been super busy here just getting orders shipped out and Sorry, we're having some connection issues today, it seems, so hopefully we can keep going without any um, freezing of our stream, but um, we'll, we'll do our best to, you know, keep it going and everything. So, uh, like I said, we've been super busy and haven't been able to do these for a couple weeks, um, just trying to make sure we're getting your orders shipped out. Spring is in full bloom everywhere, it seems. Um, you know, we're getting a ton of rain here, which is good because our everything is starting to bloom, tulips and Daffodils, uh, daffodils are still blooming, but kind of done here, but it's really exciting time of the year for us here. So um, the topic of today's live broadcast is growing your own fruit and vegetable plants. So um, when you think of Holland Bulb Farms, you probably think of tulips first and then other flowering plants that are grown from a bulb like a dahlia or a canna or a daffodil or a hyacinth. But we are more than just those bulbs. We also have a large selection of bare root perennials, indoor gardens, um, we sell seeds, and we also sell a good assortment of fruit and vegetable plants. So usually when you think of vegetable gardens, you think of uh, you know, your summer vegetables like a tomato or pepper, or cucumber, um, you know, zucchini, things like that, which usually when you're gonna grow those, types of vegetables, you're going to go to a garden store and buy a potted plant and plant it in your garden or maybe start them from seed depending on your uh, level of gardening skill. But there are also vegetables that can be grown from roots or tubers. And so I'm going to talk about those because those are the majority of the vegetable plants we sell are the types that can be grown by a underground tuber or a uh, dormant root. Uh, and I'll also kind of touch on a, a few of the popular fruit plants that we sell that are grown from a uh, bare root in one way or another. So let's get started with what I would call one of the most popular vegetable plants out there, the potato. So potatoes are grown from what are called seed potatoes. And I put these in air quotes because they're not like a seed, like if you went to store and bought a little packet of seeds. They are actually um, the tuber, the dormant portion of the potatoes. And from these tubers, the eyes on the potato, which most of you are probably familiar with eyes, um, just from eating potatoes and cutting them yourselves, from the eyes is where the sprouts and new potatoes are going to form. So they're called seed potatoes, but they are not like a tiny little seed. They're actually, um, you know, smaller potatoes that produce new potatoes. So the difference between this potato and something you would buy in the grocery store is um, seed potatoes are certified to be disease free. Um, and also grocery store potatoes tend to have sprouting inhibitors. So they're not going to produce like uh, a seed potato would because these are intended to be used for growing. Um, however, you, you could eat these. There's nothing saying that you can't eat these seed potatoes, but they're just a lot more expensive than a potato you would buy at the grocery store. So until you have your own potatoes in your garden, um, you know, you definitely don't want to use the potatoes from the grocery store to grow. And these, I, you probably don't want to eat them just because it would get kind of costly. But um, some just basics about planting potatoes is they need generally a full sun location and soil that drains well. So most of the vegetables I'm going to talk about today require those two things. Um, they can be grown directly in the ground or in pots. I know my parents, uh, they kind of have vegetables everywhere in their yard because my dad likes vegetables a lot and my mom likes flowers so they kind of have to share the space. So they have seed potatoes that they plant in pots and in the ground too. So it's kind of nice if you don't have a large area dedicated to vegetables but you want to grow some potatoes, you could get a big 
a big pot and plant your seed potatoes in there. So when you go to plant the seed potatoes, there's either two ways to really go about doing this. You can plant the whole entire tuber directly in the ground as a whole plant. Um, some people say that this is the best way. And um, the other way would be to take this potato and to cut it the ground either as a whole or cut up into smaller pieces. And the other thing to note about the seed potatoes is often they will have sprouts, especially this time of year, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's actually a good thing that the, they're going to take off a lot faster if they have sprouts. If you get a package like um, this package right here, these are French fingerling potatoes. They don't have sprouts, so if you want to encourage sprouts, you can force them to by cutting the potatoes into smaller pieces where the eyes are and then placing them in a warm, humid, bright area, and that will force the sprouts to form after about three to four weeks. But like I said, a lot of times the potatoes this time of year are starting to form some sprouts, so that's usually not necessary. That's usually more necessary during the early season. Um, and then, so once you have them planted, and you notice sprouts above ground forming, it's really important that you continually cover the sprouts and the potatoes with a couple inches of soil because if the tubers are exposed to the sun, they, this causes them to turn green, which causes you to have bitter potatoes and I'm sure no one really wants to have bitter potatoes. So that's definitely one of the most important things is that you continually cover the potatoes once they're planted with soil. So um, I actually, we do have a blog on uh, the bulb blog, Growing Potatoes 101, and that has more details on the actual planting process of growing seed potatoes. So I would definitely, if you are thinking about planting potatoes, I would go to uh, the bulbblog.com, or not the bulbblog.com, and check out our article on growing uh, seed potatoes. It definitely has all the information you need. And... I guess one last thing about really interesting fingerling potatoes that are purple on the outside and purple on the inside. So these tend to be less starchy and also high in antioxidants. So if you are a little bit more health conscious with your potatoes, I would definitely go for something like the Magic Molly that have um, purple on the inside and purple on the outside because they definitely have the, the most health benefits of any of the potatoes that we sell. So yeah, I mean, there's we have a potato on the website for everyone, for everyone's kind of need as far as what form of potato you like to eat. And, you know, if you don't have a lot of space, like I said, you can even grow them in pots, especially these smaller varieties like the Magic Molly or the Adirondack Red or the, any of the fingerling potatoes. So, um, so yeah, like I said, check out the Bulb Blog on more information on planting seed potatoes, uh, more detailed information. And, of course, we're always here if you have questions on growing seed potatoes if you've never done it before. So uh, on to the next popular vegetable that we sell, which would be uh, the onion sets, which is another, you know, the seed potatoes are confusing because they're not really seeds, but the onion sets, if you're not familiar, you may be thinking, what is an onion set? So um, basically, 
Uh, onions can be grown from seed, um, but the most common way that they are grown is by set, which is, these are like little baby onions from the previous year, and they're gonna produce more onions. So uh, onions are pretty easy to grow. They full sun, well-drained soil, um, you can plant them in spring. They're not as frost sensitive as potatoes. I would say if your soil is really cold, you probably want to let it warm up a little bit. But um, they mature in about 85 days after planting. And we sell red, yellow, and white onion sets. Um, so if you, you know, having your own onions is important. If you cook a lot with onions, which they're kind of important to most things you cook, it's kind of nice to have your own onions that you grow yourself. Uh, these, like our seed potatoes, are GMO free, which is important to a lot of people to know, you know, kind of know what you're putting into the ground and therefore what you're putting into your body when you harvest these onion and potato plants. Uh, so the last vegetable I'm going to talk about is a vegetable that when I was a kid I didn't like. It took me a little bit to kind of acquire a taste for it. I kind of resisted this vegetable for a long time and I had friends who were like, it's very good, you need to eat it with butter and salt and it's so good and I still, I didn't want to eat this vegetable. But then over time, I started listening to them and I did start eating asparagus. And so I'm assuming I'm not the only person out there who has maybe resisted asparagus because it's, uh, you know, it's a strong flavor, I guess I would say. But there is nothing better other than garden fresh tomatoes than garden fresh asparagus. And I am fortunate to um, enjoy garden fresh asparagus because my dad, about seven years ago, planted some asparagus crowns that he got from us. And they just keep on coming back. So that is one of the best things about asparagus is they are long lived perennials. So once you plant those, um, you're going to be able to enjoy asparagus, fresh asparagus from your garden for years, like a very long time. You know, I would say at least five to 10 years, sometimes longer than that. So um, you typically want to plant asparagus in full sun. They need at least six hours of sun, but eight to 10 is better and soil that drains well. And once you get them established, like I said, they're gonna live for a really long time. Uh, they are grown by what is called a crown, which is essentially like the root portion of the asparagus. So when they come in this package, um, you know, we keep them in the cooler to keep them dormant and then they're shipped in a dormant state. They do come in one big bundle, so you have to separate them. But um, you can see that it's like this long, huge root portion. So you want to plant these just below the soil surface and you kind of spread out the roots so that the roots are going to form a strong, uh, you know, a strong system, which will therefore lead to stronger, healthier spears. Um, so yes, yeah, so you want to just spread them out and cover them with soil. And then, uh, you know, you can't harvest them right away that year or the next year. Usually it's year three that you're going to harvest the asparagus. If you harvest them too early, you're going to end up with spindly plants. So it's worth waiting that three years. Um, and uh, as far as how much asparagus to plant, uh, each, crowned, each crown is going to produce about a half a pound of asparagus. So if you're not sure, that's kind of a good judge to see, like, how many people in your family eat asparagus? How much asparagus do they eat based on how many, you know, crowns you want to plant? Um, but you definitely can plant them in a row, like in one open space, or you can be like my dad and kind of take over my mom's perennial garden and plant them throughout. So you have to have, you know, uh, someone in your life who enjoys asparagus as much as you do to, to accomplish that. But he doesn't have a whole dedicated space to them. They are planted throughout their their garden, and um, I mean, it's worth it for that fresh asparagus because it's it's just really really tasty when you know that you can just go out to your garden and you know cut off those asparagus spears. Um, so so yeah, those are the three um, you know vegetables, the potatoes and the onion sets. If you're in a cold climate, like 
you're definitely going to have to plant them every year. But the one nice thing, like I said about the asparagus, is this is a perennial vegetable that is going to return for several years. So it's kind of nice to know that you don't have to go through the process every single year of replanting these things. Um, but I've also had potatoes from my parents' garden, and they are so delicious. Um, they usually grow some of the blue varieties. So at Thanksgiving, we usually have blue mashed potatoes, which I find to be really good. Uh, they just have incredible texture and flavor. So if you haven't grown any of these root vegetables or root, or they're not root vegetables, but any of these vegetables that grow from a root or tuber, I highly suggest that you you know, check that out this, this spring and summer and give at least one of them a try because it's definitely worth it. Um, so on to the fruit plants, which we sell pretty much uh, berries as far as fruit plants go and also rhubarb. I think we're sold out of the rhubarb right now. Um, but the, so I kind of want to just touch on some of the most popular fruit plants that we sell. And the first one I'm going to talk about is the blueberry plants. We have three varieties. This is Patriot, which is a popular cold hardy variety, um, Blue Ray, and there's one other variety. I'm just kind of drawing a blank on what the name, oh, Jersey, Jersey Blueberry is the third one. But um, so they come as just a little plant start. We also keep uh, these in our cooler, except for, you know, some that we're getting ready to ship. So some might have leaves, but they might just be the stem and have some buds forming. Uh, so blueberry plants, the one thing that's really important for them is the acidity of the soil. They pretty much require acidic soil. So if you're like, uh, we're in southeastern Wisconsin and our soil is heavy, heavily alkaline. So it's kind of difficult for us to really grow super healthy blueberries without amending the soil with sulfur um, or you know some sort of anything that's going to make your soil more acidic. Um, if, and if you do really do want to grow blueberries in a soil that's not acidic, it's just something you have to continuously um, you know, add and test your soil to make sure it is acidic. Because if they're not in acidic soil, they tend to get yellow and they're not going to be as vigorous. So that is definitely one thing to note is you probably want to test your soil before planting blueberries. Other than that, they, you know, require full sun. They don't get as big as, you know, certain other things like a raspberry. Um, so there's definite benefits to it. It's just the soil can be a bit tricky when planting blueberries. So you can, you know, have your soil tested through your county extension to see. And then once you know what your soil is, you can take the appropriate steps to get that soil to that right pH level to grow those blueberries. Um, so the next uh, popular berry plant that we sell is we have a couple different types of raspberry plants. This one is royalty purple, also shipped as a dormant bare root. Sometimes they do have some sprouts. Other times it's just going to be more like the cane portion of it with some bud showing. We sell Latham Red, which is a very popular red raspberry, and a double yellow raspberry. So raspberries require more space than like a blueberry. Um, they can, you know, they kind of spread. So if you're going to plant raspberries, make sure you have a dedicated space that these canes can spread out because that, that's a really big consideration. They require full sun. And I think the biggest thing to note about planting raspberries is that they require um, a lot of pruning. You have to prune out the old canes each spring. So they're a bit more uh, high maintenance, but fresh raspberries from your garden are probably worth that maintenance if you, know, if you like raspberries like I do. So um, yeah, I mean, and once they're growing, other than the pruning and everything, they're fairly easy to grow. It's just that it does require some maintenance. And the last fruit plant I want to talk about are strawberry plants. So we sell three different types of strawberries. We have um, Ozark Everbearing, All-Star Junebearing, and Early Glow, which I believe is also a Junebearing. So all three varieties are going to produce the most amount of fruit in June. That's when they're going to, you know, have the biggest harvest and maybe into early July, but the everbearing will then throughout the season produce some additional berries. And um, early glow is the, the easiest to grow and the 
suggested for beginners. Um, I believe June bearing is one of the sweetest, but these strawberries, just like the asparagus, kind of, there's 10 roots in a package and they come bundled, so you have to really take a close look because they're, you know, bundled together, but they are 10 separate roots and you can see they have a little bit of growth forming on them. Um, and yeah, you just kind of separate them out and plant them. And I, I do know, I haven't personally grown strawberries, but I do know the thing to note with the strawberries is you do have to thin them out and everything um, and make sure the bunnies don't eat the strawberries because, <laughs> or your dog, because I think that happened to my mom once. So, <laughs> but um, you can grow strawberries in planters and pots and, you know, kind of a fun project for the whole family. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the, the basics of our most popular fruit and vegetable plants. We do also sell garlic and shallots and blackberries. So if you're thinking about growing your own fruit and vegetable plants this year, I definitely suggest checking out our website, hollandbulbfarms.com. Most products have information on planting on them and um, you know also have information on bulbblog.com. Um, on some of these varieties too, if you're just not sure what you're getting yourself into, but it's definitely worth it to, you know, give you, get, you know, your hands in the soil and grow your own fruit and vegetable plants this year. So, um, hopefully I was able to provide some information for you and, you know, get your wheels turning about planting some of your own fruit and vegetable plants. And I thank you for tuning in. And if, again, if you have any questions or comments about any of these, you know, leave a comment below and we'll be happy to kind of give you more information or point you in the right direction on growing your own fruit and vegetable plants. Thanks.